All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One drama. Huge news today that Mattia Bonotto's job as team principal of Ferrari may be coming to an end very soon indeed. After Mercedes won two at Brazil, the team is not happy with the trajectory the squad has taken this season at Ferrari. And also the way the relationship with Charles Leclerc seems to have been soured. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Great recovery drive, of course, from Leclerc in the Brazilian Grand Prix. P18 at one point, back up to P4 after putting it in the walls because, well, it wasn't really his fault, Norris spun him out of the race. But according to Leo Torini, respected journalist closer to Ferrari, Bonotto's position could be at risk. Possible replacements are already being discussed. If that's the case, then, you know, it might not be guaranteed that Bonotto's gone, but at least the pressure is most certainly on. Due to errors in reliability and strategy, which led to a sudden collapse of title hopes and a disturbed relationship with Leclerc. This is a key one to me because, like, they know Charles Leclerc. He's He's probably going to be their guy to win a world championship if they actually can achieve that. And they want to keep him satisfied. And I've got to say, the Brazilian Grand Prix was probably the first time I've really seen over the course of an entire weekend Leclerc visibly and consistently angry with his team. You can understand the frustrations of the season have caught up to him. And this weekend was really the first time that that boiled over to a certain extent. And uh, you know, it's understandable that Bonotto's position as a result will be at risk. If he does get sacked, though, does it actually solve the underlying issues? I think that's something else to be discussed. So as he goes on to say, for sure Elkan, John Elkan, chairman at Ferrari, will make Bonotto way up the Mercedes 1-2. So not just the Leclerc situation, but also the fact that a team that was dead and buried in terms of title prospects in Mercedes for the first, well, half of the season, really until they actually started to get a decent car over the last few races, still Ferrari could and maybe will lose P2 in the constructors to Mercedes. And now Mercedes have had a 1-2 and Ferrari haven't achieved that for a long time if not all the way back since Bahrain. So the fact that Mercedes have got to where they are after the season they've had and Ferrari are where they are given the car they had is bringing further questions right. And this Mercedes 1-2 might prove the final nail in the coffin of Ferrari, would you believe? And even replacements are starting to be mentioned. Fred Vasseur, current team principal at Alfa Romeo, Leclerc's first team principal, close friends with Nicholas Todd, Leclerc's manager. So that's a possibility. And even Antonello Coletta, Ferrari's GT racing manager. So already there's a a few reasons given why Bonotto might be sacked and a couple of potential replacements. Vasseur, by the way, is uh, this fella who are currently team principal for Alfa Romeo, of course. So yes, that's a possibility this guy could be in charge of Ferrari next season. And on the surface, it wasn't an absolutely woeful weekend from Ferrari. It was P3, P4. They were only about a tenth of a second per lap. Science was towards the end off the pace of the Mercedes. So it wasn't an absolute disaster. But when you look at it, really, Mercedes were the fastest car. Where's that come from? Why have Ferrari fallen off the pace so, you know, so massively really why do these reliability issues compromise their entire season science took his sixth power unit here right and look obviously the reliability is not necessarily something that bonotto can control you can solve the reliability of engines over the seasons you can't increase the power they've got a powerful engine at least but you know the pace of their car the upgrade they brought in france if anything took them a step backwards and their strategy has been a disaster really from start to finish there's been many examples too many to count and even plenty more this weekend as well bonotto repeated said yes strategy isn't really an issue other teams get criticized our team for strategy is still good and they might have just run out of patience with Bonotto and be like mate you've got no idea what you're talking about time to get a proper team in and get an actual team principal in that can deliver the goods because Ferrari this season after the first three races it was like a no-brainer they would be challenging for the title till the end turns out it collapsed far sooner than expected and that this might have been best Ferrari's best chance of a title in a while because now they are seeing well Mercedes are back in the hunt Mercedes were out of the hunt but this entire season. Now they should be back next season, you'd imagine, with Red Bull as well. Can Ferrari, with their strategy that they currently have, deliver a world championship alongside if they're competitive with both Mercedes and, and Red Bull? Like, that seems unlikely. So it's understandable that they're considering potential changes. And yes, it was a P3, P4 for Ferrari, so not an absolute end of the world situation, but the fact that it was Mercedes that got the 1-2, that goes to show, really, that yes, Ferrari might have taken their foot off the gas in terms of upgrades over the last few races, but Mercedes, like from being almost a second back, I mean, what were they, a second and a half off the pace back in Spa to being able to get a 1-2 in a race, like, you know, that is going to concern Ferrari, especially comparing the Mercedes team and what they've achieved compared to what Ferrari's team have achieved with clearly a much better car. So great recovery from Leclerc, but it was obvious that Leclerc was not happy. This, I believe, was after maybe qualifying or whatever was going on here, and this was uh, obviously his comments after the end of the race, but there were plenty of moments even before that. This was in qualifying when they put him out on the inter, 
Inters and he was like, lads, hang on a second, why am I on the Inters here? He's relying on them to tell him what the correct tyre is. He doesn't know what the weather's doing. He gets on track and is like, lads, it's not raining yet. Why have you got me on the Inters? And even when he did, should have come into pit to put the softs on, like, um, you know, even this was happening, right, during, I think, qualifying itself, when he was like, guys, put the new soft on, and they were like, yeah, okay, sure, let's do it, and then they put the used soft on him, and he's like, guys, you put the wrong tyres on, like, um, that was a, that was bad enough, honestly, in Q1, and then even during FP2, which is hilarious as well, when um, the team were telling Charles and Carlos to go up to the side of the grid to get a practice start on, turns out they got it wrong, and Charles Leclerc for the sprint race would be on, he was going to start on the left side, they told him to do the practice start on the right, and they got it wrong as well with Carlos Sainz, so they seemingly couldn't do anything right this weekend, and yes, their results, P3, P4, wasn't terrible, like all things considered, like just the entire weekend was a disaster, right? And even during Quali, during Q3, they told him to box, 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 and uh, he was already gone past the pit entry, so he had no chance to pit. So, like, you can understand why Leclerc was annoyed this weekend. And after Quali, when he was P10, he was like, lads, I just cannot be bothered with these guys anymore, and you really can't blame him. And even after the race, he was like, yeah, amazing job, guys. Yeah, mamma mia, all this type of stuff. Like, uh, definitely being pretty sarcastic. Amazing, guys. Yeah, great stuff. And even this, as uh, Laura Mechia says to him, well done for the race, etc. I don't know what other reason you're talking about, whatever he says. So finally, I think from a lot of people's perspective, the frustration for Leclerc is boiling over to such a degree where the team is now thinking, damn, are we going to lose Leclerc? Are we going to lose his loyalty? Is he going to go elsewhere? What do we have to do to keep Leclerc around? Because they want to keep him. But, um, you know, who knows if the Red Bull drama continues, if uh, Mercedes Hamilton is going to step away in maybe two, three years, or who knows how long Hamilton is going to stay around. But, you know, Leclerc might dip if something doesn't change at Ferrari. And maybe that thing that uh, is going to change will be Bonotto getting sacked. And this just one other point here because Charles Leclerc was like, hey, look, every point in the championship counts. Let me pass Sainz. They didn't do it. They've explained it was because they thought that Sainz might have got a five second penalty for some infringement under the safety car. And if they did allow Sainz to slow down and let uh, Charles Leclerc pass, then they'd have risked uh, putting Sainz to P6 and losing those points. So they decided to stick with it, which I think is a perfectly reasonable decision. But mainly the frustration was because Leclerc had talked to it with the team. He said before the race, like, hey, guys, if we're in a position where, you know, I'm P3, he's P4, whatever, like, let's do the swap to make sure we maximize points for Leclerc's fight for P2 up against Perez. They didn't do that, and that's why he's frustrated. Thankfully, Verstappen also did him a favor by getting rid of some of Perez's points. And even this from Leclerc, I thought was, you know, when this came on the radio, I was like, damn, Leclerc's turned a corner, possibly, with his relationship with Ferrari. He was screaming to his engineer, like, don't speak in the corners, don't distract me in the corners, like, uh, leave me to myself unless I'm on a straight, which I think makes sense. And even these comments after the weekend, a frustrating weekend, especially after what happened with Norris, I want to go to Abu Dhabi, run the last race, finish it, and that's it, he says. So uh, basically just wants to be done with this season because I'm sure he had so much optimism after the first few races for that to fall away as quickly as it has, largely due to their reliability. I think, honestly, in Baku, that was where things really started to go downhill, but strategy has also not been helped. Now, but Tia Bonato has been adamant that, yeah, we stopped development of this car, we're focusing on next year. So the pace differential might not be the end of the world, but just the way Mercedes are now back in the hunt, the relationship with Leclerc is getting soured, consistent strategy cock-ups week after week, but also has to take some responsibility, especially after earlier in the season, saying, well, yeah, you know, it's not really a big deal. And even after Hungary, was it, or before Hungary, he was like, yeah, no reason why we can't win the remaining 10 races. They have won none of the last 10 races. I think, uh, what is it, Red Bull have won eight of them, and Mercedes have won one, and who knows what's going to happen in Abu Dhabi, but we can be pretty confident Ferrari aren't going to win. So do you think there's any validity to this? Do you think Bonotto is going to get sacked? If he does get sacked, is it a good decision? Because at the end of the day, you can get rid of Bonotto, but if you're not going to change the strategy team or everything like that behind the scenes, is it really going to affect their outcomes, right? Maybe not. So, but look, Bonotto doesn't seem particularly eager to do any of that. Maybe you need a team principal with a bit more balls, I don't know, to actually make those decisions. And um, yeah, mends the relationship with Leclerc because it's certainly been suffering the last few races and that's not a relationship they want to sour further. And you can understand really like, look, if Mercedes get P2 in the constructors, like he's probably got to go because in that car they've got to only be 19 points ahead of Mercedes. If Mercedes get another 1-2 in Abu Dhabi, Ferrari need third, fourth to make sure they hold on to second. Probably Mercedes won't get another 1-2, but you know, Red Bull should be back in business, you would think with a bit more time to set up the car. But um, I mean, still, it's kind of crazy that it's going down to the last race there after the way the season began. A couple of quick updates to close out with here. Firstly, Daniel Ricciardo confirmed a three-place grid penalty for his final race with McLaren at Abu Dhabi after the incident with Kevin Magnussen. Deserving 
genuinely so, I think. And also, apparently, Mick Schumacher has been informed by Haas this past weekend that his seat at Haas is coming to an end and he's going to be gone next season. Nico Hulkenberg is going to come through to replace him. The announcement is expected in just a couple of days' time. But apparently, Mick Schumacher might become the Mercedes reserve driver because we believe Daniel Ricciardo is going to be the Red Bull reserve driver. So now it seems that it's going to be Mick Schumacher potentially to Mercedes. Even Toto Wolff responded to this and said, yes, I make no secret of the fact that the Schumacher family belongs to Mercedes and that we value Mick very much, of course. And Michael Schumacher drove for Mercedes in their first couple of seasons as Mercedes way back in the day. But very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this Ferrari thing? Is it about time Bonotto goes? And apparently they've already got some replacements lined up. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.